1653, Isaac Walton, in the book The Complete Angler, wrote, to catch a fish using fair methods was a superior thing. The journey you are about to take with Phil Atkinson and Grantley Gray without doubt redefines the outer edges of sport fishing. So sit back, hold on to your seat, because what you are about to experience truly is extreme fishing. Each summer on the east coast of Australia, a group of very game fishermen match themselves against the great game fish of the Pacific in the battle zone where ocean and continent collide. Every sport has its extremists, a crazy few who would defy the boundaries of convention to create for themselves ever greater challenges. And in the heady world of sport fishing, such a group are known as land-based game fishermen, and this is their story. Hi, I'm Phil Atkinson and I'd like to take you on a uniquely Australian sport fishing quest. Fishing for big game fish from the rocks, or land based game as we call it, is one of the last frontiers of sport fishing. The ultimate game fish, the black marlin, is land based game's greatest enigma. And the quest for marlin off the rocks is land based game's greatest addiction. Port Stephens on the north coast of New South Wales is one of the greatest game fishing ports in the country. But it's not just offshore fishing that makes this place special. The variety of pristine beaches and headlands on offer make it a great destination for shore based anglers to wet a line. Huge cobia, hard running tuna and massive sharks that will eat just about anything all call these inshore waters home. At the beginning of this new season, with game fishing boats reporting record captures of marlin offshore in the cobalt currents, we knew that with so much good water and billfish around, the lamb-based capture of a black marlin was at last a real possibility. But as great as the north coast rock fishing scene is for most game fish, the billfish are still too far from shore for us to have a realistic chance of hooking one. Here marlin are only within reach of those with a big boat and a budget to match. With our quest for marlin off the rocks foremost in our minds, we knew the time was right to hit the highway once again and travel to a very special and familiar place. Our journey would take us south through Sydney, home of the 2000 Olympics, to a place where the cobalt blue marlin highway sweeps in hard against the coast. Jervis Bay in the Shoalhaven region is just a day trip from Sydney but it's considered by many as land-based game's holiest shrine. Because it's here that most of the world's land-based marlin captures have been made. This ruggedly spectacular and dangerous stretch of coast has incredible water depths to over 20 fathoms right next to the shore, with all manner of game fish patrolling the blue killing zone on the edge of the wash line. The seaward protruding headlands in this region intercept the warm offshore currents of the Pacific, tropical currents that each summer spiral their way down the east coast of Australia from the Black Marlin spawning grounds off the Great Barrier Reef. Elsewhere, these currents could pass along the continental shelf up to 50 kilometres from the coast. But even with all these attributes, there are no guarantees. Each year on average, only a handful of marlin are landed from the rock ledges around Jervis Bay, with many seasons producing no marlin at all. <laughs> Our quest to capture, let alone film a marlin caught from the rocks, was certainly a long shot. Our travels to the fishing grounds aren't measured in nautical miles. A four-wheel drive is a land-based game fisherman's boat. It has to get you into some of the most harsh but awe-inspiring locations possible, then get you home again in one piece.
like any great fishing spot the world over, the harder it is to get to, the less fishing pressure it gets and the better it usually is. There's no doubt the world of the rock fisherman is a breathtaking one and the call of the rocks is strong. But don't be fooled, the rocks are as treacherous as they are inviting. And it's not without reason that rock fishing is one of the world's most dangerous sports. The moment you lose respect for the ocean, tragedy can be as close as the next wave. And it's here on one of Jervis Bay's outer ledges that our quest begins. Much like the twister chases of America's Midwest, land-based marlin fishermen try to be where the action is by studying the forces of nature. Each season we attempt to predict and intercept the first fingers of coral current that lap against the sandstone ledges of the south coast. As in most challenging sports, preparation is the key to success. Even with all the odds stacked against them, as hopeful a group of anglers you'll ever find, the majority of land-based game fishermen will be geared up at all times to give themselves a fighting chance if a marlin does come their way. Having a bait in the water the week, day or very hour the warm current arrives can mean the difference between hooking a black marlin from the rocks or never doing so. And although today we didn't turn a reel, the current strength and water colour told us that the marlin water wasn't far away. When chasing marlin from the rocks, you need all the help you can get. And today, the coastal current facts backed up our own observations. With a large mass of warm water trapped directly off the entrance to Jervis Bay, we decided that tomorrow, the ledges inside the bay itself might be a better proposition than the more current dependent outer ledges we had been fishing. In some ways, the overcast and rainy conditions that greeted us on our first descent into the bay dulled and disguised the colours of the tropical water pushed in by an overnight wind change. But as the morning unfolded, we knew that at last our predictions were coming true. The current we'd hoped would follow us down from the north coast had arrived. Nestled in just behind Point Perpendicular on the northern headland of Jervis Bay, the tubes platform has a history that dates back to World War II, when the torpedo tubes, which gave the ledge its name, were built to defend the strategic deep water anchorage. And although the tubes has never launched a torpedo in anger, it's certainly been the world's number one launching pad for land-based marlin. Once you make it onto location, bait has to be caught during the night, then kept alive all day. There's no in-floor circulating live bait wells around here. On the rocks, you'll learn to make do very quickly. Blow-up kiddie pools aren't just for hot summer days in the backyard. In a fisherman's household, anything useful for fishing can go missing. Nothing is safe, not even the kids' toys. We've found that water surface area is the key to keeping bait healthy, and a wading pool with a battery-powered aerator does the job well. Generally speaking, the crew who has the healthiest and most bait in storage if the marlin ever do arrive will get the hookups. 
slimy mackerel are a gun marlin and tuna bait anywhere in the world, and it's no different here. As I fed out my first bait, I wondered whether this season really would be any better than those that had gone fishless before it. Together with warm water, bait fish activity is the other magnet for bringing big game fish inshore. As with most bays adjoining deep water, Jervis Bay is a holding ground for at times massive schools of bait fish and is under tremendous pressure as a food source for both fish and humans. Things were looking really good, but so many times in the past, all the marlin indicators were on cue and we'd caught nothing. But little do we know, today was to be the beginning of the most incredible land-based marlin run of all time. There we go, we could... We've got a good fish on here. Good shark, good marlin, good yellowfin, I don't know. Money would have to be on a shark. Bad call, would have done my dough this time. Starting to smoke me up. We wanted a marlin off the rocks, but we wanted one we could land. This thing's just too big. Too big for 15 anyway. This will be a miracle if I get this. The tubes is a great place to fight a fish, except for one thing. If a big fish does decide to head out to sea, it will drag your line around a headland getting there and in my experience, rock beats plastic every time. This marlin knew exactly where the open ocean was and powered off deep, wasting no time or energy on surface acrobatics along the way. This is called getting spooled. Got about 80 kilos of black marlin heading out to sea. I can't do a damn thing about it. I'm not a happy man. I really wanted this fish. I'm going to lose somewhere in the vicinity of a thousand metres of 15 kilo here on the first black of the season off the rocks. This isn't enjoyable at all. I hate this. Smoking me now. I've got no mercy. No mercy at all. All his life, either the hook's pulled or it's rubbed me out around the point. One thing for sure, this line's all coming off. At least the fish hasn't got all that line hanging from its mouth. No sooner had I finished reeling my line in when it was Jason's turn to get smoked up in the biggest way possible. Slow up, yeah, please slow up. Slow up. the gimbal there. Give me back. 600 metres of line has never left a reel so fast. Come on, slow up, slow up. He's going to slow down. He's on the right way. It's a good fish, mate. 
Yeah, you got plenty. You got about 300 or 200 there still. And when the end came, the line didn't just break, See ya. it melted. See ya. To see one big marlin hook from the rocks in a season is something special. To see two in one day is incredible. But when Phil Herbert then pulled up sold on number three for the morning, we all went into shock. Big Phil Herbert is a stand and deliver, no nonsense sort of guy, and deliver he did. But even he had to concede line to the first marlin of the day that played fair. By staying on the surface and running to the middle of the bay instead of out to sea, this fish gave Phil a spectacular early workout, but also a very real chance of capture. Nothing can really prepare you for the sight of a big black marlin jumping around in a bay so close to shore. Without blue ocean all around or a gleaming white game cruiser smoked up in chase, it paints a surreal and out of context picture. But it was a picture as events unfold that we would get to know well and love. Most big game fish hooked from the rocks have to be played out completely before they can be landed and have a poor survival rate for tag and release. If a rock fisherman is lucky enough to hook and land a marlin, he's probably earned it many times over many fishless seasons. One marlin to every 10 years of fishing is a better than average strike rate for land-based marlin chasers like us. During the last of the fight that most big fish are lost, and with his lifelong fishing ambition jumping around just out of reach, the temptation to lock up his drag and stand his ground is strong for Big Phil. But the patience that got him this far didn't desert him, and Phil plays the big billfish to the very end and almost an hour after hookup, finally secures his prize. A land-based game fisherman's dream come true, a marlin off the rocks. The significance of such a capture was not lost on anyone who was on the ledge, and we all shared in the magic of Phil's achievement. None more so than a fisherman's family, who know all too well the sacrifices made in the name of fishing. <laughs> Is this Marlin? Yeah, that's Marlin everywhere. Running down the track, going, my dad's a legend, my dad's a legend. <laughs> While we were targeting Marlin, Danny had his sights set on something more tasty and found his mark. A dead slimy fed to the bottom did the trick.
Oh, oh, nice red. Hot red. Oh, done. Four and a half kilos of prime South Coast snapper. JB going off. Leaky's <laughs> <laughs> and ready, that's what it's famous for. You'd think that landing a marlin from the rocks was the difficult part over, but that's where your problems just begin. Thankfully, a mobile phone call to a mate with a boat and the good old Aussie promise of a slab of beer did the trick. Saving what was left of Phil's back from a 2k slog through the thick bush dragging nine feet of marlin. To us, using the boat was a bit of a compromise. But as sport fishermen, if we can't release fish, we do whatever it takes to make sure they're never wasted. The boat ride out ensured the fish was weighed and iced down quickly, without the addition of a gum leaf and gravel garnish. Back at the club, pulling the scales down to 81 and a half kilos, the news of Phil's marlin sent the well-tuned, lamb-based game grapevine crazy. And in an area where a bull bar is not just for bull, we weren't surprised to find a much bigger crew of hopefuls on the rocks the next morning. Land-based game is not always about getting away from the crowds. Limited to a handful of really good locations, you keep running into the same old faces season after season. Just about everybody knows everybody, plenty of long-standing friendships are made, and newcomers are kept at arm's length until they earn their stripes. In contrast to the dull day that marked the arrival of the Marlin Water, this was destined to be a hot summer's day in more ways than one. Experienced land-based game anglers are masters at interpreting the most subtle indicators of game fish activity. But today, the wave of fish life was obvious to all. One of the peculiarities of land-based game fishing is that most of the knowledge has been developed in theory rather than practice. Most fishermen, having never hooked a marlin from the rocks, haven't had the opportunity to test their tackle and techniques. But if the most valuable knowledge is gained from experience, then after this day, we were all to be a lot wiser. For once, rather than just hoping or dreaming of a chance at a marlin off the rocks, we were expecting it. Every marlin fights differently. Some fights are long and painful, some are short and sweet. With a bit of help from the guys in the boat, this one was just short. <laughs> it's a shame the torpedo tubes don't work anymore. They could have been really useful today. By the next hookup, we were beginning to realise that this season on the rocks was unlike any other, not just in numbers of billfish, but also in size. Few fish were under 80 kilos, and some, like this one, over the magic 100 kilo mark. Land-based game at times demands difficult choices. You're damned if you do, and damned if you don't. Yeah. 
with a big fish heading around point perpendicular, do you keep the drag up or back off? Perhaps this fish would have won either way. They say you can't keep a good man down, and I reckon this applies well to fishermen. Bouncing back from his last knockout, Jason didn't waste any time stretching a fresh spool of 15 kilo on another horizon bound beaky. After some good early rod work, things looked under control and at the half hour mark the fish was turned and danger avoided as it was led back from the point. Go easy mate, go easy. Oh, that was intense. Yeah, that was a lot. Hey! Thought it was going to snap you. Tell me about it. That was drama. But with only minutes to go in the fight, the huge marlin rolled and won its freedom. And Jason was left fishless once again. Like any addiction, land-based game fishing is all about extremes. The lows are tolerated in the anticipation of a future high. The disappointment of losing a big fish will pass quickly, but the thrill of the experience stays with you always. If someone told you they'd seen four big marlin hooked from the rocks in one day, you'd probably call them a liar. But when hookup number four did come, we had a real sense the goalposts had shifted. What started out as the quest for any marlin was fast becoming the quest for a marlin over 100 kilos, an outcome we dared not dream of before. This big marlin couldn't be bothered running out wide. It simply stood its ground and matched up to Gary in a close range tug of war. Day's total already at Marlin 3, Anglers nil. it took only one more swipe from a Marlin bill to make the score 4-0. The learning curve was as painful as it was complete. We all needed to rethink our game plan before the next day. There's a saying that goes, the worst day fishing is better than the best day working. But sometimes not by much. The funny thing is, in a few months time when the marlin have left us, memories of this day won't contain anything about being cold, wet, tired and hungry. And for many, overcoming these physical extremes is just one of the attractions of chasing big game fish from the rocks. We were learning very quickly that a single-minded approach was the secret to staying connected to big marlin off the rocks. Every reel must have a full load of line and every knot checked, then checked again. 
Big baits, big hooks and long heavy traces that would scare off anything but a big billfish were the only choice for serious contenders. Even though land-based game fishing is basically an individual challenge, when there's a big hook up, a real sense of teamwork takes over. Everyone hauls their bait in and huddles around the angler to lend moral support and of course, to watch the main event. Even when you think you've done all your homework, there are some things you just can't prepare for. Who would have thought that after a long hard fight and just metres from being landed, this fish was still fighting fit. Expected power dive over the drop off. And Nick's dreams are shattered. You know, like first beaky, and then if it's something that big, I would have liked to start on something smaller. <laughs> hey, you gotta start somewhere. Something about half the size. Unfortunately, you don't have a choice of where you start. Hi, Mum. <laughs> When there's more fishermen around than marlin, and that's nearly always, you spend endless hours doing this, trying to be the first with a bait out where the big fish are. But if the wind, current and your bait don't cooperate, then you're not even in the race. Not another blow up toy. When it comes to marlin, some of us will try anything to get the jump on our mates. Quickest and easiest drift you'll ever get. Just as well the billfish had shut up shop for the day, getting a strike on the way out could have been a real letdown. Up until now, the fishing we'd experienced had been unprecedented, and it was hard to imagine that it could last any longer, let alone get better. But the best was yet to come, and in a sport where legendary days are few and far between, this day would be known forever as land-based game fishing's Big Wednesday. The day itself started out worse than most. The news of marlin being caught from the rocks had spread right through the boating fraternity. And for some reason, a misguided few believed that the marlin were magically attracted to the rocks we were fishing off. Of course, in reality, the marlin were spread right throughout the bay, with even more cruising outside the heads. And we were simply hooking them here because we couldn't go anywhere else. I guess the grass always looks greener or the current bluer on the other side of the fence. Rock fishermen are always trying to get their bait away from the rocks and boat fishermen are trying their hardest to put their baits against the rocks. Thankfully before the action started most of the boaties remembered why they had motors and decided to leave the slow fishing to us.
There's an old rock fisherman saying that roughly goes, never take your shoes off if you've got a bait in the water. Anthony's catnap was about to turn into one of the most exciting but painful experiences of his life. And while Anthony does his best to avoid going barefoot skiing, another marlin takes a bait and for a land based first we've got a double hook up of big marlin on our hands. And for a while, mayhem rules, tempers flare, and friendships are strained as we all come to terms with being out of control. Get out of the way! If sport fishing is about taking on impossible odds, then this must be sport fishing in its purest form. We've really got to take our hats off to the guys in this boat. It takes a lot of self-control to look the other way and pretend not to notice all this going on. Things were looking up as both Marlin powered off in opposite directions. But finding the point, Anthony's marlin proved yet again that rock beats plastic and Dave's fish got tail wrapped and snapped his heavy leader like cotton. While Anthony contemplates starting a game from scratch, a battle with the truly massive fish we've been waiting for was looming. It was almost as though this fish wanted Jeff to see just who he was messing with. But Jeff already knew what he was in for.
hooked up to a fish of over 120 kilos and surrounded by boats, if Jeff can't stop this marlin from running wide, it will be lost the same way as his last. game fish from the rocks, all you have is a rod, reel, a kilometre of flimsy thread, two feet very firmly planted on the ground and hopefully a high tolerance to back pain. There's no boat to back down on a fish or keep your line belly tight and every metre of line you lose hurts twice. Once on the way out and even more on the way back. This fish knew the best escape route, but Jeff had other plans. With the score at Marlin 9, Anglers 1, we were looking for someone to even the tally. And just one fish of this size would do the job nicely. an hour of battle to get back to where he started, but in spite of appearances, this marlin is far from ready to throw in the towel. Land-based game fishing, there are a few second chances. It's a fight of attrition. Being forced to go too hard too early can mean you've got nothing left for the second half, and the fish will almost certainly win. Finding a second wind, the marlin dives over the drop-off, leaving Jeff no alternative but to back off the drag and pray that it swims clear. Over the rock. Went over the bombing. The line hit the rock. 
Coming so close to landing such a massive marlin was an achievement in itself and it proved that with a little more luck, our goal of a marlin over 100 kilos from the rocks wasn't just a pipe dream. And as the last boat pulled up anchor and left fishless, we felt a sense of relief. Finally, we had a level playing field. To a swimmer, a fin this big spells get out of the water fast. But to fishermen like us, this massive but harmless sunfish is a good omen and means the next marlin hookup can't be too far away. Yeah, mate. Get your flat in, mate. Quick! About to jump. There we go. Oh. Yeah, I got him, I got him. Let's get him, Grant. Throughout most of the action so far, Grantley had been behind the lens of our camera. But as a dedicated land-based game fisherman, there was no way he was going to miss out on a shot at the fish of a lifetime. After watching so many defeats, he knew as well as anyone what he was in for, and he was ready to go one on one. Hooked up on a short stroke of rod, Grantley certainly had the leverage equation working his way. He doesn't even know he's hooked yet. Unfortunately, life in the rocks is tough on tackle. Dusty roads, long bushwalks, and dry windswept platforms take their toll. High-tech gear designed for boat-based game fishing gets pushed to extremes. Caked with road dust and bone dry, Grantley's roller runners were soon howling in protest. Hardly the time to do your tackle maintenance, but better late than never. Without being under siege by boats, at last we were able to let a fish do its fighting out wide, well away from the dangers of the rocks. A good dose of fresh water shifted some of the road dust and finally got the rollers working properly. With the line singing in the breeze, we all had our fingers crossed. After one screaming run of a half a kilometre, the fish eventually turned with less than a hundred metres to spare. <laughs> But when the marlin finally came in, things didn't go to plan. Disaster threatened as the fish arced into shallow water on the far side of the point. With Jeff's defeat still fresh in his mind, Grant decided to take advantage of low tide and meet the fish halfway. Hemingway's book, it was about now that the old man ate raw bonito to keep up his strength. 
We offered Grant some, but he said he never eats raw fish without the sauce. After a decade of hard work, Grant's greatest fishing ambition was now a reality. Going good. Yeah. Well done, son. Oh, very, yes. very happy for you, mate. Oh. Well, it's a team job. Thanks, yeah. fellas. Yeah. You've done well. At 72 kilos, this was the holy grail that had inspired us to start our journey. But the story wasn't over yet. What is it about fishing that has such universal appeal? Maybe it's because it's the greatest of all equalisers. Regardless of wealth, gadgetry, expertise or how good you think you are, all you really need is a bait in the water to be in with a chance. This was the 100 kilo fish we've all been chasing. It was Carl's first season on the rocks. First hook up. Of all the different types of anglers, land-based game fishermen must be the supreme optimists. To actually believe that you can hook a fish of this size from the rocks and have a fighting chance of landing it flies in the face of probability. Whether he lands this marlin or not, Carl has already experienced fishing that most of the world's greatest anglers never have or never will. Perhaps the outer limits of fishing really are the product of your own imagination. I wonder how many other fishing challenges are yet to be realised because no one has yet dared to imagine them. The fight's never over until the fish is on the rocks, and Lady Luck can desert you as quickly as she arrives. Carl's dream run had suddenly turned into a nightmare. The line had tangled around the fish's tail, something that all marlin fishermen dread. It's impossible to turn and lead a big fish back to the rocks when you're fighting it from the wrong end. Landing the giant marlin was now all but impossible, Tail wrapped and sinking, it soon snagged up on the bottom. To a sport fisherman, losing the fish of a lifetime is bad enough. But knowing that it won't live to fight again is just devastating. Nobody wins. He's uh, gotten the better of me. You've seen how you're stuck on the bottom here. And I'm now just contemplating on what to do with him. Is it just walk back or break the line or try something else with it, I really don't know. This is the first marlin for me, and I'm looking forward to having another go at another one. 
I mean, I really don't know what's options. Options. To a fisherman, where there's line, there's hope. And rather than just break the line and call it quits, Carl decided to go for a real long shot. While Martin and Andrew cut and tied his line to the rocks, Grantley and Pete set off on the long trip back to town to get a boat, in the hope of raising the dead fish off the ocean floor. Hours passed and as we waited, we weren't even sure our idea would work. It had never been done before. Maybe we were just clutching at straws. Grantley and Pete finally arrived and with darkness approaching, it was a race against the clock. Sending a cliff gaff down the line, hooking the tail wrap marlin off the bottom was just too easy. We'd come so close. At 116 kilos, Carl's marlin was the class of fish we now dared to hope for. But land-based game is more than just the fish. To us, land-based game is a complete journey, an ideology, a way of thinking, even a way of life that involves finding, hooking, fighting and landing a game fish from the shore. Using the boat to land the fish had saved the day but left the ultimate prize unclaimed. Beautiful fish. Our season was coming to a close. As the tip of the current continued its journey down the coast, so the marlin would follow it out to sea, to once again become the exclusive domain of blue water game fishermen. Whether you landed, lost or just saw a marlin hook from the rocks, it was a unique experience that would stay with you for life. As Andrew had his moment in the sun, it was obvious there were no winners or losers. As sport fishermen, we'd all been forced out of our comfort zones and had become better fishermen. In land-based game, the risks are great. With the freedom to fish the rocks comes the responsibility for your own safety. Each season, many more fishermen than marlin will lose their lives on the rocks. Even the greatest fish in the ocean is not worth losing your life over. And so was the closing chapter on our journey. The men and women who sport fish the world over share a love and respect for the environment. By taking on impossible odds, sport fishermen find more enjoyment in catching less fish. After all, the great game fish may well be our opponents today, but without them tomorrow, our sport is nothing. Land-based game fishing is not something you take on lightly. It's 99% bushwalking, horizon gazing, dreaming and years of hard work. But all this and the occasional moment of insanity when a big fish takes a bait combines to make the whole experience an unforgettable and addictive one. At the start of our journey, we'd set ourselves the challenge of documenting a unique style of fishing and a special breed of fishermen. And what we captured both on film and line was beyond all expectation. That 100 kilo fish we'd begun to hope for is still out there. But what comes after that? 
marlin off the rocks on fly? The challenge is now for sport fishermen the world over to continue the quest. But until next summer, all that was left for us was to use the trip home and the long winter that was to follow to dream of the new season and to reflect back on the best season ever in the history of our sport, when the great marlin visited us for a few awesome days on the rocks and the outer edges of sport fishing were changed forever. <laughs>